Lisa, put her to the test. Lean in, Lisa, so get it off your chest. It's more than just a trend, cause everyone's her friend. So lean in with Lisa, spend your time with Lisa. Lisa's got something to say. So reach out to Lisa every day. Hey everybody, we got a great show for you today. Somebody that you all know and love from the hit TV show, The Wonder Years. He played the dad, Jack Arnold. He's my very dear friend of probably 30 plus years. And I'm so happy to have him with me today. He's Dan Loria. So reach out to Lisa every day. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> hey. This is a treat. We're doing something different, guys. I just want everyone to know this. Normally, my podcast is done in my office, and I have my producer in Pittsburgh, and I have my writer in West Hills, and we're all together. But today is going to be a different vibe. We're going to be doing it here in my backyard. Beautiful backyard. Thank you so yeah, much. Look at that fountain. Isn't that pretty? Kind of feels like I wish we had a pina colada, like if we're <laughs> like we're in Maui. Yeah, there wouldn't you that go. be cool? Yeah. Um, but instead, we're eating cheese and crackers. We've got a little shrimp cocktail here. Got some blueberries, got works, blackberries, yeah. little Perrier. So we're just uh, we can we're do just, a commercial. We're right just here. oh here chilling. Uh-huh. Are you on camera? Because I don't see yeah, you. Yeah, I'm right there. Are you sure? Yeah. I need to see your face. Okay, I'm right there. good. So anyway, Dan, Loria. Yes, dear. (laughs) You were on the Wonder Years. Do you ever wonder if things are going to get back to normal? What's happening? Oh, you mean normal? uh, Well, after COVID, it's been kind of hard, but we'll eventually get back there. I mean, people are starting to shoot more regularly now. Um, It's been a real, it's been a real test. This, you know, working with masks and people having the lockdown, and uh, I did a uh, movie in Oklahoma where it was supposed to be an eleven-week shoot, but because of shutdowns, it went almost twenty weeks. Oh my God, twenty yeah. weeks in Oklahoma? Well, yeah, I didn't have to go there. Luckily, after I was finished, I said I'm going home till they call me again. And every time I went home, they ended up shutting down. Oh no! So luckily, I didn't stay. Well, luckily, you yeah. didn't get COVID either. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And now you're back, and uh, I know that you are very involved in something that I think everyone needs to hear about. Our, uh, our videos to save the regional yes, theater. Yes, yes, it's it's this is a this is a it's basically a an organization. Would you say? Well, it's actually just volunteer actors volunteering to help save regional theaters, and what we've done, we have a, a Durango a, Playfest. DurangoPlayfest.org or New Jersey Rep. Dot com. I think, no, I think I have that wrong. It's, uh, DurangoPlayfest.com, NewJerseyRep.org. Okay. We're in 20 we're different gonna theaters. Post, we're going to post it for everybody because I think you guys who are theater lovers are going to want to get involved in this. Right. Why and, don't you let Dan... If you, if you go to those websites, you'll see some of your favorite actors. Uh, Name a couple. Brian Cranston, Alfred Molina, Tony Shalhoub, Judith Light, Wendy uh-huh. Malick. It goes on and on. They're all, and uh, they're John doing... John Lithgow. John Lithgow, Laurie Metcalf. Laurie I mean, Metcalf. Ed O'Neill. Eddie O'Neill. So, yes, um, from Modern Family. You'll see them all doing uh, personal stories. And it's... The purpose of it is for people will go to these theater websites and they'll see their favorite actors uh, reading something they wrote telling a theater story or um, reading something that inspired them. And that encourages the subscribers to come back and donate to the theater. And so far we've raised almost $3 million. So these are theaters that all, they could be anywhere? Anywhere. In any city? Yeah, if any, uh, uh, Jim Pickens sponsored a theater in uh, Cleveland. Jim Pickens, Uh, Grey's Anatomy Anatomy, people. They're all My daughter's favorite show. Yeah. He's great. And, um, you know, a lot of people ask me, how did I get all these great... Yeah, how did you? Name? I asked them. Because you, you, you used your charm. I just called them and I said, hey guys, we got to do something to save the theaters. And everybody was... 90% of the people I called said, I'm in. Very hard to say no yeah. to this guy. So. He's all about... He's an actor's actor. Yeah. Whoever Try does... <laughs> We're working on that. That's what, he's definitely... Because I know 
we we've known each other a long time. We were neighbors for years, yeah. and that's how we met. And back in back in the old Hollywood days, and uh, I think before was, the Wonder Years, it was right before the Wonder Years, and mm-hmm. then in '89, I think '88 or '89, uh, when I met you. Yeah, '80, end of '87, beginning of '88. Right, somewhere in there. Right, and Dan used to have all these people over to his apartment, including people like Christian Slater and Fred Savage Fred, when he was yeah. a little boy. Danica. And Danica McKellar and yeah. who else? Allie? Allie Mills. Mills. Yeah, we would watch Allie old Mills. movies. And we would watch old movies, the old black and white classic movies. Because still Dan do it. Still, still does it. Because, and I really have to say that now I get it. Like I get what you were saying about the editing aspect of it. Oh, it ruined it. It ruined it. This cutting on every line, we have a lot of very bad actors working and a lot of good actors not being able to get jobs. We're not going to mention who those are. No. But, uh, but we know who they are. you do one line at a time, you don't have to be very good. No, so. it's and, and they and they and now they cut everything. Cut, 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 yeah. cut. And an actor could screw up on his line and he just does it over and it does it over. Like if I screw up today, we're going to be cutting, cutting, cutting. Right. Which I'm sure I will be. I think but, it's a lot harder for the actors today for good actors because uh, yeah. when I started we did three four minute scenes without a cut so all we had to do is learn how to act now they don't care if you can act so if you don't look the right yeah. way it's unbelievable uh, like the people like Spencer Tracy and Catherine Hepburn and Ingrid Bergman and and, and I always show uh, Cary Grant Rosalind Cary Russell Grant. going around a desk for five minutes and 40 seconds without a cut five minutes and 40 yeah. without one cut without any cut so, of all the movies you've seen, and I know you've seen a lot, I'm black and white, the old movies, do you have a favorite? I think it's impossible to pick one favorite. Uh, if I had you really to. Don't have one favorite? No, if I mean, if I somebody know. said you have to pick one, I probably picked It's a Wonderful Life. That's my favorite. I've heard most people say that. Because we see it every Christmas and it. And ironically, it was not a, a successful movie. It almost, it, well, it did bankrupt Liberty Pictures. Did it? Yeah, and it wasn't a success until they started showing it on television. Well, speaking of It's a Wonderful Life, you did something really wonderful for me. What was that? You introduced me to Jimmy Stewart. Oh, yes. Yes, and that was my dream come true yeah. because we went to his house I remember you had to drop something off to his house, and you said, come on, we're going to go to Jimmy Stewart's house. I went to Jimmy Stewart's house? What? What? Well, I, I <laughs> called him general because we worked on a National Veterans Foundation mm. meeting. You know, I, I could never call him uh, uh, Mr. Know, James. Stewart. Or I, I called him Mr. Stewart, sir, but sir. usually I call him general. <laughs> general? Because he was a general in the Air Force. He stayed in the Air Force Reserve after World War II, so he was a general. He was also uh, just one of the nicest people. Oh, yeah. I mean, just a genuine, yeah. soft-spoken. Oh, yeah. He I was... loved to going to the uh, National Veterans Foundation with Charles Durning. He was, Charles Durning you know, was your was best friend? Yeah, he was Wasn't my mentor. Wasn't he your mentor. best friend for oh, yeah. years? He was my mentor. And uh, we'd go there, and it would be, you know, uh, General Stewart and Robert Mitchum and, uh, you know, uh, you met my Robert favorite, Mitchell. The, yeah, you the met best, Robert Mitchum? The best storyteller, oh. though, was uh, Cesar Romero. Oh, he, Cesar Romero. Wait, wait. Let me think of this. Cesar Romero. I mean, I'm a little younger than you, but Cesar Romero played the Penguin? No, the Joker. Oh, the Joker. The, yeah, but he did oh a lot God, of famous movies. Oh, my God. How can I forget movies, that? The Joker yeah. in Batman. Yeah. The original Batman. The television one. The television That's one with Adam, original, with Adam yeah. West. Yeah. With, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So tell us a Cesar Romero. Tell us a story about Cesar. Well, he was a great storyteller, a great rock and tour, you know, and his nickname was Butch. And why? Do you really want to know why? Okay, I guess I know. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, it's a great. He wouldn't. He would tell you himself. But uh, even uh, Jimmy Stewart, if Butch was there, he would let Butch tell the story. <gasps> so Jimmy Stewart one night he says, Butch, Butch, tell Dan about when I went out with Ginger Rogers. And Cesar Romero was very flamboyant, you know, and just such a gentleman. And he went, oh, Tom, the most beautiful couple <laughs> in Hollywood. And Jimmy would call and say, Butch, Butch, could you meet me at Chasen's tonight? I'll oh, be with Ginger. And of course, for Jimmy, anything. Of course. So he would get there early, and Jimmy Stewart would walk in with Ginger Rogers. Oh, People would, God. oh, oh, and all. 
But unfortunately, poor Jimmy can't dance. <laughs> so Ginger and I, Fred had nothing on me. <laughs> and we would dance, people would applaud, they never let us off the floor. We were just fantastic. And of course, when the evening was over, Jimmy took her home and reaped all the benefits. Oh my God, is that true? Sure. Yeah. What a great... Well, he was known uh, as the Great Date because whenever, uh, you know, somebody was out of town, they would call him Butch take my girlfriend to the world because right. he was he, yeah, he yeah. was gay yeah he, he was gay uh, and he, he never hit it right you know, so. and 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 he just would escort all these gorgeous starlets oh and they all love going out with him because he he was a great friend he was a gentleman and he was a great dancer and he was one of the nicest people i oh, hear is that is that true people. yeah well i remember one night i think we were at dinner you invite i remember you you invited me to dinner at wayne rogers house right and I walked in the door, and sitting at the table was Peter Falk, Peter Falk. Barbara Eden, yeah. Cesar Romero. Was he there? No, I don't know if was he was there that night. I don't remember. But I know Peter Falk well, Peter was Falk there. Was Barbara, there. Eden Barbara Eden was there. Was there. Because Wayne because Rogers. Peter Falk and Barbara Eden, Wayne Rogers handled their money. Right, because he, he was a was financial a, guy. Yeah, yeah. He became a financial guy after MASH. Yes, he was. He was actually always dabbled in that. He and owned restaurants. What most people, I remember. Yeah, and what most people didn't know was Wayne Rogers was Peter Falk's roommate in New York. Oh, that's I know. How they oh met. okay. Yeah. Well, that's it's odd. You know who Jack Klugman's roommate was? Charles Bronson. No. Yeah, and Charlie Durning's roommate? Who? Jack Palance. Really? Mm -hmm. When they were in Manhattan, living yeah, it, when, when they, they were, were young, struggling after, actors. Yeah. Now, see, uh, that would have been, I would have wanted, I would love to be a fly on the wall for Jack Palance and Charles Durning. Well, Charlie was funny and Jack Palance. Because, was yes, mm -hmm. because when I interviewed Charles Durning on the red carpet years mm -hmm. ago, may he rest in peace, because he was just a lovable guy, I remember saying to him, he would, we walked up to him, and I said, I, Charlie, because I remember you just called him Charlie. Yeah. He looked at me like, why are you calling me Charlie? And I went, hi, Charlie, you are my favorite actor. <laughs> And he said, he looked at me in the eye and he said, you better say that. <laughs> yeah, no. Charlie was uh, Charlie was a funny guy. He had great one. What years. a what a dry yeah. sense of, what yeah. a great sense of humor. He was always flirting with you, too. So yes, he yeah. flirted with he me a lot. He was a big flirt. Yeah. Yes, he did. I don't know if he'd get away with some of that stuff today. I don't know. Yeah, he would. He's adorable. And he knew all those lines from uh, the old film noir movies, you know. Oh, he was just a legend. He really was. And I think he was a very underrated actor. Oh, I, no, I think I, he, he was a Tony Award winner. Yeah, but he, I still uh, think... He was an Emmy Award winner, and he was uh, twice nominated for an Academy Award. So people loved working with I mean, I, I think Charles Durning was as good as any, like Anthony Hopkins and any of the, the you know, the major, well, I, major... Acting is very subjective, and I think if, if you said that to Charlie, he would say, listen, uh, it I doesn't know. matter... It's the next he was so project. Humble. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very humble guy. Yeah, we just do the best we can. And he was a real theater guy. Oh, love the theater. He yeah. loved the theater. Did you ever do anything with him in the theater? Oh, I did a couple of things with him and a couple of things with Jack. What'd you do? Well, with Jack, I did uh, the uh, the value of names. Uh, was that on which, Broadway? No, no. It was uh, where did we do it first? We did it. Uh, we did it in New England, and then we did it at the Gary Marshall Theater. And with Charlie, I did uh, Men in Suits, and I did another play oh, with him. Oh, that was him. great. That's right. Oh, I did Men The Price suits. with Jack, too. Uh, let's see. I don't do revivals. I don't do new plays. But Jack made me do The Price. And, of course, we had that reading series, which we, the every Monday readings. night, we read yes. a play to help writers get literary. And I which read was, a few of those. Yeah, you read a few. A I, lot read, of them. I read a lot and of And you read a lot of narration, too. I did a lot of that, too. When we read screenplays, that's hard to that do. That was fun. Yeah. But I remember one night we were there, and I think it was Bruce Davison, mm -hmm. you and me, Richie Zavalia, yeah. Joe Montagna, Joe Montagna. Who's, you talk about the nicest guy nicest in the world. Nicest guy ever. Yeah. And now, am I wrong, but Burt Reynolds was either in the audience or he read with us. He, Burt Reynolds read he, twice. He read with yeah, us. Yeah. That's right. I remember, I'm sitting there going, 
Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe who I'm reading with. Yeah. No, we always had big names read. It was just, yeah. I mean, and I'm yeah. so sad that, that when that went away, it was yeah, well, we Westwood Playhouse, Cannon Theater, Carnet Theater. Yeah, the last five years we were at the Cannon. We did it for 10 years. We did over 480 readings. Yes, I know. And and then and then the Cannon closed. Yeah, well, we, we got 70 writers literary agents. So in that aspect, we were successful. Where we weren't successful was very few plays got produced. The writers ended up getting hired for television. And like Charlie said, it's not because they wanted to, it's just that theaters will not produce new plays. And they wonder why they're in trouble, why right. the audience is so old. Well, they don't do anything new. Yeah, and these play readings were really helping new writers, young writers yeah. really, you know, introduce their work. What, what advice would you give to these young writers of today? Well, the first thing to do is actually write. Don't try to write what you think people want. Write what you want mm -hmm. to write. And uh, be objective about it. When you read it in front of it, these Zoom readings are terrible because you can't pace oh, anything. They're yeah, the worst. It takes away. But when we get to the point where you can read it with some good actors in front of an audience, uh, get two or three people you really trust and listen to them. You don't need a pat on the back. You need constructive criticism. And uh, uh, Neil Simon, uh, I think the greatest thing he did for uh, younger writers was the title of his biography. It's Rewrites. Mm, and like he says right in the first rewrites. chapter, I know a lot of people who can write. I know very few people who can rewrite. Mm. And that's the key to writing. To be able to take your material and just rewrite it so it could be really ready for the big screen. Right, because everybody writes and they think it's great and they send it out mm -hmm, right away. Mm -hmm. well, and they don't want to make any changes. No, you got to read it. You got to wear it's like bread. You got to right. knead it. You got to right. keep going over it. A lot of people don't want to change their writing, especially even if their their script gets picked up. Right. And they let's say the producer says, well, we want to make a couple of revisions here and there. Some of them don't even want to do that. Yeah, I, I just finished uh, writing a play. It only took me two days to write it and it's been over two months and I'm still rewriting Are it. You? And the other day was the first time I sent I sent to Joe Montaigne. Mm -hmm. And Joe gave me some notes and I'm gonna work on that. So the actual writing doesn't take that long. Right. Rewriting, you really gotta go back and forth and each day read it and change lines and it's a little easier with computers than when I started with the Thank yellow God for these computers. What would we be? Oh my God. They, they really don't help me write, but right. they are essential to rewriting. So you played Vince Lombardi on Broadway yeah. and he was the head coach of the Green Bay Packers. Right. And the general manager. And the general manager. What's your favorite cheese? My favorite what? What's your favorite cheese? Oh, for Wisconsin, <laughs> yeah, the cheese hats. As well, I, I like, I I like sharp cheddar, face. yeah, but they, uh, yeah, they still, a lot of people came to the play with those cheese hats on, you know. That was my writer, my writer Adam, Adam LaBarkin told me to ask you that. Adam, you like hats. that? You like that, Adam? I asked him the question, Adam, you like it? Good answer, right? You yeah. like it? Okay, good. Um, tell me about, because you're, I have to tell you, you're one of the best storytellers I know. You've told yeah, some of the greatest stories. Charlie Durning made well, sure we t learned how to tell stories. But no, Dan, it's like you could tell a story, you could be at a, a dinner table with people, and you could just break out into a story, and you could play everything, mm -hmm. and, and you really think you're with these people, like they're all there at the table. I want your best Peter Falk story. Well, I, <clears throat> I have you with Peter Falk. Tell but, me as uh, many as you want. We have yeah, all day. No, we, were, we were good friends, and I. Um, everybody does be your fault imitations. But the one story I love, which has all of them in, uh, we would go to dinner at least once a month, usually more, and it would be Dom DeLuise, oh. Peter Falk, Charlie Durney, and Jack Club and me. What and a sometimes group. I would ask a young writer, just so I could hear the same stories again. So Jack Klugman and I were doing the value of names which was jack's favorite play it was about the house on american activities was that the one you did at the falcon theater yeah yeah that was and, great and uh uh that was an important subject to jack now you got to understand jack one night i walked off stage and i said to him we were good tonight we were hot and he went we're always good <laughs> that's not what it's about now charlie Durning 
was the other way. Charlie saw everything I ever did, and every time I, you know, after the play was over, I'd wait for that, you know, pat on the back from Charles Durney, my mentor, and Charlie would say the same thing. Another 20 years, you'll be an actor. Oh. And I'd say, all right, Charlie, I'm going to do it. So now Jack and I are doing this play. It was a Sunday afternoon, and together, sitting out there is Peter Fall, Dom DeLuise, and Charlie. Oh, and no, Jack I wish I was there. <laughs> and Jack comes running into the dressing room. He goes, all right, we got to do it for us. Forget the theater. And I said, Jack, <laughs> you're you the one. Said, don't do it for us. Yeah, you, you're the one who says we're always good. Relax. We and our oh. friends. He goes, you're right, you're right. I said, what are you going to do? Shave my head and send me back to Vietnam? This is great. I'm glad that. So... We went out and we good. we had one of those special shows and I don't know what causes them. Oh, but as man. we're bowing, Jack says, We gotta get the boys together. Find out what the hell we did right tonight. <laughs> so that was Sunday. Tuesday night we go to dinner. And it was great stories. You know, Peter was, oh, I remember when we did the revival of Iceman Comet, you know, and he's going on and on, and Dom is talking about this. And then Charlie Durning, very emotionally, he puts his arm around my shoulder and he goes, all right, another 10 years you'll be <laughs> So I said, what I'm always, I just said, like what I always said, I said, yeah, Charlie, I'll keep working. And then Jack Klugman looked at Charles Durning and he said, Charlie, are you an actor yet? <laughs> and Charles Durning leaned in and he says, Jack, I'm getting damn close. Oh, wow. And Peter Falk reached in and goes, Charlie, I think you're there. And he pushed his hands. I'm gonna cry. I know. No, that's I'm the gonna, way they I'm were. Gonna, that's really like um, that. No, you know, the greatest are gone. They, they, they were a different breed. There was a di they were a different yeah. breed. It was like, I mean, when you compare th that generation of actors to now, and I'm not saying. I mean, listen. We have well, they really, all came from the theater. We have, we have, they, they were real, the real deal. They were yeah. actors, actors who just acted to act. They just did it because they loved it so much. They were so passionate about it. It was mm -hmm. their, it was so in their in their soul, in their heart, in their soul. And, and I mean, they're still good. Uh, like today, like my friend Brian Cranston, he always well, goes back he's to fantastic. Theater. I mean, he, he Lou, I put, Lou Diamond, Phil. but I put Brian yeah, yeah. in that category. Oh yeah, J.K. Simmons, and I put Lou, Lou in that category. And, yeah, and and James Pickens is in that, and and Alfred Molina and all. They're Alfred all those Molina. people who did the videos for us. They're all the people who go back to the theater and learn their craft, and they show up with their lines learned, and they don't do one line at a time, and then look at the director and go, "What's the next line?" and then say it because they know it's going to be cut. So, yeah. I don't know, I get dizzy watching new television shows. Yeah, well, you've mm -hmm. done a couple of new shows. You've, oh, you've, I, you've done, I, you, you've been... Pays the rent, you know? Yeah, It lets yeah. me go back to the theater. You, mm -hmm. but you were, th this blows me away. When I met you, you told me that you had this little, little studio apartment in Manhattan. Still have it. You still have it? 45 years. Right, in the, in the, in the theater district? Mm hmm We're all... History. Okay. Mm -hmm. 45th Street, right near where Jimmy Ray's restaurant was. Yeah, right around the corner. Did you work at Jimmy Ray's? Was you really a dishwasher? I, I wa yeah, I washed dishes in the back you at did. Jimmy Ray's at when Joe Allen's. You and, washed dishes? Yeah. I, you know why? Because I could work from midnight till 3 in the morning so I could do plays where we didn't get paid. So you so. were doing theater back then when you were... Oh, what? yeah. we. I mean, when Equity out here uh, killed... Uh, showcases with that stupid rule about you got to pay the actors even doing rehearsal minimum wage when the theaters can't make any money anyway right uh i don't think matter of fact the majority of the membership voted against it but the board overrode the membership which i still don't understand that so you were washing dishes you're doing theater when did you before the wonder years what were you doing like right before you got the the part on the wonder years what were you doing well uh, two years before the wonder years i was still in new york 
Uh -huh. And, you know, everybody knew me as an actor and in New York a stage actor. And uh, I wasn't really, didn't have to wash dishes anymore because I was doing a lot of soap operas and One Life to Live. Oh, you did One Life to Live with Judith? Two years. Judith Light? Yeah. Oh. So I, w I was, you know, I could do the plays where I was getting paid because I was doing uh, TV. But then my agent made me come out here, and I, I got lucky. I just started working and did a lot of guest spots for a year and a half, and I did two spots on Growing Pains, and the writers of the Wonder Years, the Neil Marlins and mm -hmm. Carol Black, they met on Wonder Years, I mean on the uh, Growing Pains. On growing pains and so you worked with Alan Thick. Oh yeah, yeah. Nice guy. Nice like, guy. And much we played more tennis talented. together. He and I played tennis. Yeah. He was my tennis partner. Much more talented than people gave him credit for. He wrote music. Yes, he, he was. He was a very. He yeah. was a great storyteller. Oh, I used to love he to told great him. stories. Yeah. I, Charlie Durning came by the set one day when I was working on Rolling Page, and he and Charlie were just laughing. He was a good. I liked Alan. Yeah, I thought he was, he was a cool guy. Yeah. And then, yeah. so you worked with Judith Light. And then Judith, like years later, she plays your wife in Lombardi on Broadway. Yeah, Tommy Kale, who, um, the only reason why I got into Lombardi was because of Tommy Kale, the director. And uh, they didn't want me because I wasn't a movie star. But then Tommy insisted that we do a reading. And then the writer and the producers wanted me, but they had to convince the theater owner. So. It was Tommy's idea to do a reading for the NFL. Oh. And we did it with Joe Beth Williams, who was great. Oh, I love her. But nice, nice, nice woman. Right, and she couldn't leave family and make mm -hmm. a commitment. Uh, so Tommy asked me for five names, and Judith was, I think, the second name of the five I gave. And uh, she, I remember, this is a great story, because I auditioned with all the women, Except Judith, because she was couldn't get there, and Tommy was not happy with anybody. There were a couple of people, some big names. Mm -hmm. uh, he was mm -hmm. well, I guess mm -hmm. so. And I said, Tommy, can you wait one more day? I had to leave. I had to go back to L.A. I said, Judith can be here tomorrow. She's in uh, Washington D.C. So he said, Well, okay, we we're going to look at some other people for other parts. So I'll have her come in. So now I'm in L.A. They auditioned Judith. And then I get a call from Tommy. He goes, we are not even letting her leave the building. <gasps> She's in the outer office. You want to tell her? Oh, my God. So Right away. Boom. Right. They bring Judith in, and I said, Judith, I think we fooled them. You're stuck with me now. Oh, my God. And she said, God. all right. She always called me Poppy. She said, all right, Poppy, we're going to, well, we'll show them. How does she get, now, wait, where did she get there? Poppy from? That was just, Poppy, I call her mom, Poppy and she from? calls her Poppy. Oh, that's it just cute. came about that's from That's cute. There people we worked with but um, uh, now it was me and Judith and they were really upset right because they said two television actors you're not gonna you won't run 10 days more or less 10 weeks and we ran 11 months I know you did and I tried yeah. to see it and we were supposed to go to New York and then unfortunately we couldn't go and I was so sorry I missed it but then I did see I, I watched it on YouTube did I watch it on YouTube? No, you watched Christmas Story. What did I watch? I watched, no, no, I saw you as Lombardi. Uh, we didn't do the play on YouTube. It might have been No, maybe it was something else. It was, yeah. it was, or did you send me foot? Maybe you sent it to me. There was like a commercial. A trailer film. or yeah. something. Okay, yeah, then you, yeah, 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 yeah. Then they did, and you did the Super Bowl, the, the commercials, right, this past Super Bowl. The one then, which was the year that Green Bay Packers won the Super Bowl. Right. You were amazing. No, it was. And uh, you met him? Fun. Who? Lombardi. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, I saw him once, but I never you met never him. You never met him? No. So, what's your. So, when you found. He died him, at 57 he years old. He was young, so, yeah. very young. So, um, so, what was it like being. playing this guy, this amazing icon? It was, uh, it was great. Were you uh, nervous at all? No, because it was a good script, and I had Judith, and I, I never had... You never get nervous? No. Ever? No, I never had stage for me. You I'm always a, anxious to get out there, but I don't think... You had so it. many people coming to see you. The best part about it was being an old jock, getting to meet all those great athletes that came. I mean... One, one night, Hank Aaron, Yogi Berra, 
and Frank Robinson were sitting together. Come on. And in the play... <gasps> Tell my husband, oh yeah. my God, honey, if you hear this, you'll flip. And uh, in my the play, the first fan. speech uh, Lombardi gave to the Packers, he says, we're going to be the Yankees of professional football. And of course, we were in the round, and you used the audience as if they were the team. And I looked right at Yogi, and I went, we're going to be the Yankees of professional football. <laughs> so when the show was oh over... Frank Robinson and Hank Aaron and Yogi come backstage, and Hank Aaron was so, he was so funny. He put his hand on me, he said, thank God you didn't say Yankees again. Yogi would have killed us. He was elbowing us. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so it was, it was great to have those old Packers out there, to have all these sports legends come. Well, who was your favorite? Because uh, you grew up in Long Island. Yeah. Uh, what part? I grew up in Lindenhurst. Lindenhurst, Long yeah. Island. So that's South the South Shore. Shore. Yeah. Okay. The poor section. <laughs> the poor section. Very blue collar. Which makes you even a better person because you grew up poor, because it makes you appreciate everything you have. Oh, yeah. And um, were you a Met fan or a Yankee fan? Well, originally we were, me and my mother were Dodger fans. And right, well, that was when the Dodgers were playing. Right, right, right. Because he was a Yankee fan. Then when they Your moved, dad was a Yankee fan? Die hard. And then when the Dodgers moved, my mother never, I don't think my mother ever watched a baseball game again. That was it? And then I became a Yankee fan. Uh-oh. So. Honey, don't come out. Yeah. Tell well, me. I, I root for the Mets. I, root for, I, I hope the World Series every year would be the Mets. The, we love the Mets. We're Mets fans. We, we, we happen to, in fact, when we got married, the, the song that played when Rick was walking down the aisle was, Meet the Mets, yeah, meet, meet the, the Mets. Mets. <laughs> Come on down and greet the Mets. Da da da. Okay. Anyway, he he danced down. The, it was very cute. Um. So, what do you have going on right now? What are you doing? Well, uh, besides the Durango Play Fest and all that. Well, we I was scheduled to do a play at the New Jersey Rep, and because of COVID, it was closed. So we're hoping to do that. Well, I'm supposed to do the. Um, play written by Lee Blessing called Tea with the Boss mm-hmm. with Wendy Malik and my goddaughter, her niece, Gwen. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I produced a play years ago with Hal Gould and Alan Rosenberg called Old Business. And Harold Gould? Hal Gould. Oh. Harold Gould. Hal- Harold Gould? Yeah. We call him Hal. Oh, you call him Hal? Yeah. Did he die? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, longer. yeah. I thought he died. So, um, he was really good. What a good character know, actor. That's why we put him in a play. We got rave reviews. And now we want to bring it back because it's kind of perfect for COVID because yeah. it's just two actors and we're never on stage at the same time. Mm. And monologues, all phone conversations. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to find mm-hmm. a young actor to play, the son. So I'll do those two plays. And uh, I'm supposed to go back on This Is Us <gasps> for a couple more. I hope. <laughs> it's up to okay. Dan Fogelman, the writer, oh, who God. I love. So I'm hoping he'll bring me back. Okay, so you didn't tell me you were going to be on This Is Us, and I am sitting there watching with my family. We're watching this, and all of a sudden, Jody's father appears on camera. Jody, yeah. it's Chris Sullivan, who plays Jody. Who was in Lombardi with me. Who was Broadway. in Lombardi with you. Yeah, all of a sudden, Dan appears, and I'm going, what? Yeah. No, Wendy and, and Wendy, Alec you and, and I play his, his parents. parents yeah. Right. So we're, uh, you know, I don't know if they'll bring me back, but they better uh, bring you back. Yeah, I'm you were hope great. So. Yeah, well, we we enjoy. And Dan Fogelman is such a good writer. He's a good. He's a good. Well, he oh, he's a pitch. great writer. He's yeah, a great writer. He, he wrote, wrote pitch. Well, yeah. pitch was about the first black, the first black Woman. female baseball player. Right, pitcher. Yeah. Pitcher, which what I love that show. And it, we it, it should well, not have been. It should I, not have been no, canceled. It should not have been no, canceled. No way. Because no you way. were fantastic. Everybody Who else was on in that, that show? It was Kylie was the right, picture. right, right. Yeah, um, MP um, played the catcher. Right, that was and, a good show. Good uh, cast. Jack, your friend Jack McGee was my assistant okay, coach. Was the assistant yeah. co- okay, okay. No, it was uh, it was a great show and it was uh, well written and I I still feel if uh, and she was great. Yeah, if Hillary had won, Clinton had won, they wouldn't have canceled the show. Definitely not. Because it was about a woman succeeding in a man's world. So. And that was. And everybody year. says, oh, you're crazy. Fox News and Fox Entertainment are two separate things. And I said, same stockholders. 
So uh, I think a lot of the shows that 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 succeed, uh, you know, have a lot. I think a lot of it has to do with what's happening. You know, a lot more than I think people. Yeah, realize. I think so too. Yeah. I mean, it's it's. I know you're very very passionate about that. Oh yeah, and the Wonder Years shouldn't have been canceled. Not the not when we were canceled. I mean, that was it was a hit show. Yeah, you won Emmys every year. Every year. Yeah. Why was it canceled? It was canceled because of one man, Ronald Perlman, not the actor, the man who owned Revlon. Not he the actor. He bought the company, right. and he was trying to rob uh, ABC. And then he tried to make it look like it was Ted Turner who bought the syndication right. And Ted Turner never does public interviews. He came out right away and said, I would have bought a hundred more. I didn't have anything to do with canceling the show. And then they issued a statement, quote, the amount of profit was not enough to keep the show on the air. What a, what a travesty, because that was one of the greatest shows ever on TV. Yeah, well... I mean, it was just a... It was uh, coming of age, you know, and... That's and, one person... If ever he and I are in a room together, only one of us coming out, I wouldn't bet on him. That's how angry well, I am Well, he's got a that. lot of yeah. shit, you know. Yeah, well, he deserves yeah, it. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But the other actor, Ron Perlman. Oh, he's one of my best friends. We love friends. him. Oh, yeah. You did right. self -story. He He did he's one of our one videos, of too. He's one of the Now, Ron, Ron is... He is. It's amazing that <laughs> somebody can play golf for that many years and still be that bad. <laughs> it is... I tell you, on the <laughs> golf course, all we do is laugh. Oh, well, well, every night I saw your play, when I would go, i bring people. Yeah. Anyone who came to L.A., I would say, okay, we're going to see Self Storage yeah. because, guys, you're going to pee. And oh, you, yeah. Ron, Richie. Well, I directed, wait, but. Wait, it was yeah, you, Ron, was Richie, and Joey Joe, Pant. Joey Pantolano. Joey Pantolano. Right, yeah, and Tony uh, at the Odyssey th At the Odyssey, Odyssey right. Theater. It was right. It was Joe, Tony Spiridakis. Yeah. Yeah, that was oh. a fun. Play. And they ended up making a movie what out a of fun. it, but the movie didn't do well. Uh, it did? Rich, they no, made a movie? Richard Dreyfus did the Richie's the volume. We met Richard Dreyfus on the plane yeah. to London last uh, two years ago. We were on the plane to London, and Richard Dreyfus was on sitting right like right next yeah, to us. He, he did readings for us. He too. was so he was he was so enthralled by Ella doing her editing on her iPad. He was right, right. he like I was chopped liver to him, <laughs> but she's like he's like sitting with her going, oh, show me another one, show me another one. Yeah, yeah. he's like, do you want to be an artist? Because you really should. Mm -hmm. You need to believe in yourself. He's like a very cool guy. Yeah. So uh, you work with Richard, Richard Dreyfus. A lot of readings, you know. And then we did the uh, course stakeout. That's when I first met. Oh, him. that's right. You did Forrest stakeout. Forrest Whitaker and I were oh, the other that... two cops, and uh, Emilio Estevez and Richard Dreyfus. Funny movie. See, now there's a story, too. We go that to shoot. was a funny movie. They had an old school, and yeah. they made it look like the police station. So we're going near the shoot, and there's a couple of... Uh, we were up in Vancouver. There were a couple Love, of Canadian Indians. Like crackers. And they're making a totem pole. Right. So John Batham, the director, he tells the AD, you got to tell those Indians that you got to get that totem pole out of here because we're shooting. So the AD goes over, talks to him, comes back, and says, uh, excuse me, Mr. Batham, if they move the pole, it's very bad luck, and they're superstitious. Superstitious. You cannot move, and John Batham was like, what, are you kidding me? I'll go. So he goes over and talks to him, and he comes back and goes, we're going to leave it there. So if you see the movie, you see these two Indians out there carving the totem. i got to watch the movie there's again. No, I have to watch the no movie There's no mention again. about it, but the movie was the third biggest gross of that year. It was huge. So when we went to shoot Stakeout 2, I said to John Batham, where's the where's totem the pole? pole? Where's the pole? <laughs> and Dennis Farina was in, oh, who was my good was friend. Oh, he was so good. He was in Stakeout 2, and he, and he always said, we didn't do as good as one because we didn't have that the totem pole. pole. <laughs> That's great. So, didn't he, yeah. pa he passed away? About five years ago. Five now. years ago. Yeah. He was one of the best actors, too, Dennis oh, Farina. Dennis was one of the, you know, all those Chicago guys. Um... They're fun to be with. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Okay. I'm going to ask you five questions you've never been asked. We're playing a game. Oh, boy. Okay. I'm not good at this stuff. Dan That's and I are going to play a game now. Ready? Go ahead. First question. What's your favorite scent of bubble bath? 
Bubble bath? Bubble I don't think bath. I've ever had a scent oh, of bubble bath. Oh, come on. You have I, I don't take baths. I take showers. You've never taken a bubble bath? No. With any of your... Wild nights? Ex-girlfriends? No. no. We don't all have this wildlife that you had, you know? Well... <laughs> I'm not, I, I can't. If you were to take I'm, a bubble bath, what would your favorite scent rose. be? Rose. Rose? Right, rose. The scent of roses. Really? Rose? Yeah, I like roses. Okay. Well, I'll accept that. What's your favorite? <laughs> I don't know why you're asking these questions, Dad. <laughs> Uh, then they ask me who I want to be on a desert island with next. Yeah, Go what's your favorite pillow color, lavender or pink? No, wait, these are for these were for D Wallace. Wait, Adam, you screwed it up. You gave me the wrong questions for Dan. Have you ever considered open? Okay. Have you ever considered opening an Italian flower shop called Loria's Florias? No. Good. If I opened a flower shop, you know what I would name it? Zuzu's Petals. You know what that's from? No. It's a wonderful life. Remember <gasps> Zuzu's Petals? Oh, Zuzu's Petals. Oh, my God. I don't know why. I don't remember anymore. that. Why don't I remember that? Well, I... next Christmas when you watch okay, it, you go, Zuzu's I'll have to, Petals. I'll have to watch that. Who do you think would make the best host on Jeopardy? To take... Um, to take Alex Trebek's place. Alex place? Uh -huh. we played cards with Alex. I don't know. Um, you played cards with Alex Trebek? Oh, yeah. Really nice guy. Very conservative, uh, but very nice guy. Very smart guy. Um, I'm, I'm not sure because I don't like to see actors do that. I like to see news people kind of do that. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I think they'd thing. be better. And I, and it's I the, think the they timing. Ought, right. And I think they ought to have a woman on it. I think the timing mm. is right. I'm there. available, everybody. There you go. <clears throat> So my favorite, my, my second favorite Dan, after you, is Dan Tannis. Oh, the restaurant? Yeah. yeah. Who's your second favorite, Lisa? Lisa. You would know Lisa Arendale, who's a Tony Award winner. She's a wonderful actress. Is she? Mm-hmm. What has she been in? Uh, she won the Tony for, uh, what was the play? Not Maureen. Wait a minute. Was she the one that was in? She's on our video. Not The King and month. I with my friend Paul. No. No, no. no. Ma Rainey's? She did Ma Rainey's no, Black No, it wasn't Bond? Ma Rainey's. It was some, one of those other plays that she won the Tony for. But I've seen her at the public theater a number of times. So, a number between one and ten. How many years should a person get for not putting their shopping cart away at the supermarket? Have you ever been asked that? <clears throat> no, I As think As he they, chokes on his blueberry. I think they should uh, be given three months of collecting shopping carts. <gasps> that is a very, that's worse than going to jail. Yes, to just go out there every day and collect all the carts. That's, you know, that's not a bad punishment. No. But do you actually take your cart back? Every it, time. Every time. Yeah. You've never once, ever. No, I'm a it, Marine. I would never do that. Oh, you're you're in the military. No, I would never do that. That would be yes. That would be that would be a very good uh, uh, consequence for not bringing back the shop the shopping cart. Um, mm -hmm. Have you ever forgotten your lines? When oh, you do, everybody. Okay, you've done you've done lines. You've done a lot of live theater. Yeah. Have you ever forgotten your lines? Of course. And what everybody happened? Is. Robin. Well, I think the best story about that was uh, in Lombardi. They were ha they had a little pool because I had never dropped a line. So they were betting on when it was going to happen. And there was a scene where it ended with, I kissed Judith on the cheek. And I say, I got to get to work. And I go running off. And then she has a few more lines to the reporter, Keith right. Knox. And I guess it was about 240 shows in. I didn't forget my line. I forgot where I was. I was like, I just went blank. No. And of course, Judith, she saw it right away. You, for, you forgot where you were? I just didn't. I just stared. I just, I don't know what happened. And Judith came up and gave me the biggest kiss I ever got on stage and said, you better go to work. And I went running off. So I love you, Judith Light. Right. So after she finished the scene... She, she had to come off at the same place I was. I was getting changed for the next scene. And as she came off, I said, oh, thanks, Mom. And she said, I won the pool. 
<laughs> oh my god. And I said, oh, okay, so now the next night we get to the same exact oh, spot. Yeah. And I uh, paused. And Judith went, mm mm. <laughs> I could not get another kiss like that. And now I go running off, and she comes off and she hits me in the back of the head. And as she said, you dirty old man. I said, I gave it a shot. <laughs> so, no, she's she's great to That's work cute. with. That's cute. She, she, I mean, this, she's one she, of the best. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, I've been very lucky. You know, I work with Priscilla Lopez oh, and I Judith Lai, Wendy Malik, and Priscilla was yeah. in a chorus line. She played Morales when I first saw her in the original ch cor yeah, chorus yeah. line she's on Broadway. The, I did other people's money with her. We've been best friends ever since. So, yeah, Judith Light was great in... Um, I thought Straight her role in Transparent was, oh. that was one of my favorite shows, and I have to tell you, when that went off the air, I was devastated because it was such a shame what happened, mm -hmm. and um, what are your thoughts on that whole thing? I mean, what do you think about, like... You know, I don't know what the behind the, uh, you know, the behind the scenes thing on that show. You don't so. know what really went on, or... No, and I don't. I don't no, want to hear the no. negative stuff. Yeah, yeah. Know. But it was so. such a good show, and the yeah. cast was just stellar. Yeah. yeah, and just the sweetest person in the world. She's sweet. Uh, she's always uh, been involved with animals, like Wendy Malick. They're big on saving the animals and gay rights. They out there because we all have so many friends. Yes. That are and um, you know Judith is a very committed. Uh, She's a good citizen. Mm, very ethical. Yes, yes. She's uh, she's very. one of you know. I, I've been so fortunate to work with leading ladies. Like You've worked with some of the greatest yeah. women. Mm -hmm. And uh, I worked with Colleen Dewhurst. Once. <gasps> yeah. Oh, was she yeah. one of the greatest? Oh, the best. Yeah, I really liked her. Did you ever meet? You never met. He died early, Spencer Tracy. No, no, no. I, no, he, he died. He died in '68. At 68 years old. But I know he's, he was definitely one of your favorites. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, well, you can't be better actors than people like so, Tracy and Jimmy Stewart. So people and, like that inspired you in your, during your career? Yeah. Well, well, I still tell young actors the best acting lesson they're ever going to get is watch old movies. You can't watch the new ones because of the editing. You right. can't see any timing. Can, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's timed by a machine and it's cold. There's no heart to it. But when you watch an old movie and you you know you see Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy go on four or five minutes without a cut, you, you see the magic. You, see, and you can feel that's it. when you see the ma the real yeah. magic. And your parents were they supportive of you when you were growing up and wanted to be an actor? Very much so. Uh, yeah, I remember the first play. <clears throat> I went to college on a football scholarship, and I, my father came up for a game. And that night I was doing a play, and I got in my room and I said, "You stay over. You're going to go to a play today." My father was like, "Wow, what play?" Oh you know, and he came to the play, and it was the King Mutiny Court Martial. All he wanted to know was, where's the boat? Because the movie, this is shit. Where's the I boat? I said, no, no, pop, Well, the, the stage play. is not big enough for the boat. No, the play, the play is just we got a little backdrop, trial. but we don't. Yeah. So anyway, I said, what do you think? He goes, oh, what do I know about acting? He goes, uh, so he went over and talked to my teacher, a very famous woman, Constance Welsh. And I said, oh, boy, two people who shouldn't be my truck driving father oh my god constance well but they would talk for like 10 minutes and then he came over and he goes you know the old lady thinks you're pretty good maybe you ought to stay with this oh really yeah and i said yeah oh. you wouldn't mind pop he goes yeah you work as hard in this as you do in football you'll be all right oh and that that's was beautiful, always their Dan. attitude that's yeah. beautiful and oh. your mom too my, well, mom, everything you did, yes, it's all Right, yeah. right. No matter what you did, it was oh. Academy Award. Right? The only thing she didn't like is when she saw me play a villain. Then she would. When did you play a villain? Oh, a lot of them. I, I, you play a lot of villains? Yeah, I played Al Capone in Vespers Eve in New York. On stage. Yeah, and during intermission, my mother was going around, everybody knew it. She doesn't curse like that in real life. She was doing much. She was apologizing. No. For me. Are you serious? <laughs> Yeah, she, she was telling people. Yeah, he's not like that in real life. <laughs> I wish I met her. Oh uh, yeah, she was funny. Because he used to tell me about her all the time, and I never got to meet oh, her because yeah. she never wanted. She never came to L.A. She came once. She met Joe Montana, and Joe still talks about. It. She said to Joe, "Where are your people from?" And Joe Where are said, your people from? "My mother is from Calabria." And my mother went, "Cause they're hard-headed." 
you know. Calabria, Calabrese. Yeah, and then and my mother bangs her head and says, hard-headed. And then Joe says, and my father was from Sicily. And my mother said, oh, you're half Italian. Oh, <laughs> Joe are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, my God. Your mother should be on stage, not you. <laughs> your mo oh, I wish I met your mother. Yeah, very funny. I never met his mother. So Calabria, okay, so it's Cal Calabria, Nap 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 Napolitano, wait, it's Calabria. My mother was from Naples. Naples. Napolitano. Napolitano. My mother would say, hey, that's where the cooks are from. Right, Napolitano, Calabrese, and... Oh, they're all different. Names. Sicily. Sicilian. Sicily, they're all... So, you so do you ever date women who, like, aren't Italian? I think 90% of the women I went out with aren't Italian. Because <laughs> yeah. I once heard that in order for Italian, I dated an Italian guy in high school. He was Italian. I met his grandma, went to his house more food than you could ever i felt it was it was <laughs> she all true. she wanted to do was feed me feed right. me i think the italians and the jews are very similar in that way because they, oh, yeah. the we mothers too. love to you know I'm, I'm like a jewish mom mm. so but i remember he once said to me that i don't know if we could ever get married and i said why and he says because you don't make a good sauce <laughs> well you, you'd have to go to the mother and have him have teach her me teach you, how to yeah. make a good sauce and i always wondered if that was the case with all these attacks because i had it so then i lost my virginity to an italian guy in college and he said the same thing about the sauce of course so would would you be with a girl who didn't make a good sauce i could oh okay that's even better so I do, ladies I don't care. <laughs> ladies do you hear this ladies out there all you beautiful single ladies out there i cook and i clean he I cooks, wash windows on Thursday. he cleans he was a dishwasher, he acts, he Whatever plays, he play, he's an athlete, he's a jock, <laughs> he's, he's, he, was in, he was in the armed forces, he'll, are you handy? Not too bad. Can you, can you put a nail on the wall? Oh, that kind of stuff I can do. Can you put a picture up on the wall? I'm more about gardening. Can you garden? Yeah, you have I'm a green good. thumb? A little bit. What do you think of my garden? Oh, it's beautiful. I have nothing to do with it. Yeah. But what do you, I have a good gardener. Look at that. Roses. Do you love it? Do you love my roses? Look at that. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Pretty. You should see it. Not bad. Mm -hmm. He knew me when I was in a little little apartment in uh, Hollywood. So were all of us. <laughs> That's right, all of us. We've 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 moved up. I I, I would say. Oh. I would say yes. I would say. Okay, so guys, if any of you want to help Dan. Yeah, I mean, if you could support your local regional theater in any way, buy a subscription, um, sponsor them. Our, our videos, it costs $1,500. None of the actors get any money, but it's for editing and setting up. If you want to sponsor a local theater, let me know. They'll get 72 videos from 72 stars. They put six a month on their so, website. So anyone, let's say somebody in Santa Barbara wants to uh, donate $1,500 and then they, they could... Pick a theater they want to. Pick a theater we'll, in, let's we'll say hook Santa up the theater with the editor Jeremy Fletcher. He's the real star of the video. But uh, like Laguna Playhouse has raised over four hundred thousand dollars. That's amazing. Yeah. So, and I guarantee the theater that if they do not make at least fifteen hundred dollars in two months, I will make up the difference. Personally, I have yet to make up the difference. You and don't so, need to. and so, if anybody does donate. Mm -hmm. Tell me, like, what, do they have their name somewhere? So that Well, that's up between them and the theater, but yes, okay. everyone who, uh, like, I, I donated for New Jersey Rep, Wendy Mallett did for the Berkshire Playwrights Festival, uh, Jim Pickens did for the Kamala Theater in Cleveland, and we all have our names on there as, you know, the ones who donated, you know, sponsored by. Right, right, right. So it's a great way, it's a tax write-off. It's, uh, the money goes directly to the theater, it doesn't, uh, and then the theater pays the editor, and the editor, uh, Jeremy, he, he not only gets them the videos, but he sets up a website for them, and he helps them when they want to do a virtual gala to raise money. So they could basically go to the website, and they can donate on the website. Yeah, they can call, they could email you, and you can. Could, anyone can email me because I'm helping Dan with this project. That's right. And then I we'll already got a few of my. Yeah. yeah, I got a, a couple of my uh, actor friends. I am so happy 
that you came on oh, my show well, today. Anytime, anytime. This was like no, because we we're talking like we normally talk. We're talking like we talk. <laughs> this is how we act when we're all the time. Even when we're not on the air. Even when we're not right. on the air, we talk like this right. for thirty-five years. years yeah. Right? Yeah, we I just love, catch I up. Love you. you know, Can I have a okay. hug? Oh, Are you vaccinated? No, of course. So oh. Yeah. At my Thank age, I was so right away. Yes. Dang, you know? Yes, it's nice being old. So. In this, in this case. I want to thank my guest, Jan Gloria, for being with me today. What a treat here in my backyard. Can't get better than that. And I want to thank all of you for leaning in with me today. And until next time, leaning out. Lean in, Lisa, put it to the test. Lean in, Lisa, so get off your chest. It's more than just a trend. Cause everyone's her friend So lean in with Lisa Spend your time with Lisa Lisa's got something to say So reach out to Lisa every day